several things get out their um, snap journals and notebooks, and they're going to get ready to start our lesson. Hey, kiddo. Our lesson for today is about the program. Then we have an idea of what the program does, or why they are doing it. Yes. It's a type of a graph. Good. And we're going to write some words to pick those graphs. You guys should know how to spell this. of a graph. Good. What kind of graph is it? Is it a bar graph? What do they use when they have these types of graphs? What are we using? Pictures. Good. And what are these pictures used for? Are they pictures of just people and family? What kind of pictures are they? symbol stands for something. Great. Okay. So now in order for you guys to learn more about pictograph, we're actually going to put a pictograph together about, this was the Miss H class this week, you guys. We're going to put a pictograph together about students that take the bus, students that walk, pictograph or any graph that you make, you should know that you should always have a key. And a key helps people understand what your math is about, your graph. And for this key, we're going to use figures. Yes, figures. So each stick figure equals one say buffers, if you're a buffer, raise your hand. If I say walker, if you're a walker, if you're a raise your hand. So we can get accurate about how much we do. So do I have, who are my buffers in here? Raise your hand. So we have eight buffers. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to tally. my walkers. Seven. So we have seven walkers. And who are my people that come in the car? Did I say people raise your hand? Six. Okay. So six. Walkers first. How many walkers did you say we had? Eight walkers. So how are we going to make it into a pictograph? Yes. We draw stick figures. How many stick figures are we drawing? We have eight buffers. Eight stick figures. Correct. So everyone, make sure you draw eight stick figures. Those are our buffers in the class. Walkers. How many walkers did you have? Seven. Good job, class. So what are we going to do now? Seven stick figures. And same thing for our people that come in the car. We have six. So six stick figures. Graph that we have made. It's a graph that is explaining information, the way of displaying information 
And then this one specifically is a pictograph, which means it draws pictures to explain the complex of the information. Anyone have any questions before we go further? Okay. Now I have a worksheet for you guys that I want you guys to complete. I will be going around for um, you guys to work on it, and I'll be helping you. And the worksheets are um, simple, as long as you're able to read pictographs. So I need you guys to pay attention to what the graphs have labeled. The first side is called using a pictograph. And what it is is that it gives you the table first. Right here, it gives you the table. And then the information on the table you need to transfer onto a pictograph. So, for example, first grade says 40 students. And then your key says that there's 10 students equal a happy face. So if there's 40 students, how many happy faces do we need? Does anyone know how many happy faces we're going to need? Good. Four happy faces. I'm going to pass this around right now. And you guys, first thing to do is write your name on both sides. That way we know it's yours. And um, once you guys get it, I'll go through a little bit more of the information that you need. You have to transfer the data from the table to a pictograph. Then it has questions for you here to help you understand the data. How are pictographs and a table alike? How are they alike? Why are they the same? How are the pictograph and the table different? What's the difference between the tables and the pictograph? What is the purpose of the pictograph? The key, what's the purpose of the key? Does anyone know what a purpose of a key is? Yes, to help you understand the information. Good. Describe how you would find the total number of students at Elm Street School. So total number of students. How do you find a total? Add. Good. Very good, class. And the other side is about fishing. And it asks you how many fish did Michael catch? How many fish did Emily catch? And each fish represents six. So I need you guys to work on that right now, and I'll be around to help you guys out. Now the class is working on the worksheet, and they're going to have about 15 minutes or so, depending how much time they need to complete it. And once it's been completed, the teacher now, I will go over what they're going to have to do for their next assignment. Okay. Class, five, four, three, two, one. All eyes on me. I need you guys to be attention. Thank you. Now I'm going to be explaining to you guys the um, little assignment that you guys are going to have to be doing. It's kind of fun. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. You have to make, now you're going to be making your own pictograph about class. And this pictograph is going to be about, that's not a good color to use, it is going to be about Miss Jane's first grade favorite lunches. So we're going to be taking count of how many students, um, like each lunch. I haven't, I didn't choose all the lunches because there's too many to choose from, so I choose, I chose about four to use. So whichever one's your most favorite is the one you're going to vote on. So the first choice you have is pizza. Second choice is hamburger. Chicken nuggets. mac and cheese. Those are our four categories. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take tally counts of the students who like each one. It doesn't have to be your extreme favorite as long as you're, which one you're most likely to like the most and serve the most. 
So my pizza lover, raise your hand. So we have four pizza lovers. How about my hamburger lover? Lovers. And last but not least, my mac and cheese fan. Five. Good. This is the information that we have come with about favorite lunches. And now what I need for you guys to do is to um, get up, grab your markers, and construct the paper, and come back to your seat so I can go further. Does everyone have what they need? Markers and construction paper. Should I continue? Okay. Now, what I need you guys to do is to make a pictograph. And don't forget to have your tea. I'm not asking for a specific tea. Um, you can have pizza look like pizza slices. You can have it look like pepperoni. You choose whatever you would like. Each one could be different. They all could be the same. As long as you have a tea and let us know which each one's first in place. So we have four here. Six, nine, and five. So now you guys all need to uh, put together a pictograph. Be creative. Use different colors, different symbols. As long as you are telling me what your symbol means. You guys are going to have the next 20 minutes. If you need more time, I'll give you more time as long as you work quietly to complete this. Okay, does, everyone, does anyone need more time to finish up their assignment? Are we all ready? Okay, now I'm going to call you guys one by one. I need you to let us know what you made and what are the symbols that you chose and make sure they're represented on your sheet. I'm going to go first. Go ahead. We're just going to go in order by how you guys are sitting. Just stand up at your seat and show us your work. Students are progressing with their work right now. And once they are done, we're going to wrap up the lunch. You guys did very well, boys and girls. I hope you guys understand more now about pictographs and you're able to use them outside of your classroom to display information. Can anyone tell me in which way can you use pictographs other than in math? What could pictographs be used for? Yes. In science. Good. So how, what would you use in science for to display what? Different types of information. Good. Population. Good. Those are numbers. Um, how about in social studies? Could you use pictographs? Good. Pictographs can be used anywhere. Even at home, to help you display information, maybe you want to count how many cars you have, how many Barbies you have, whatever you would like, you're able to use them with. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson about pictographs, and hopefully you guys get to use them further in class.